Hey folks, hope you're having a good afternoon. Today we're starting a new chapter of Nebulous Fleet Command. This is the first time playing the Open uh, Outer Systems Protectorate update. Um, so there is a new faction that's available that's been introduced to the game. Uh, we're going to try that out. We're going to learn all their systems. And we're going to be doing some shipbuilding and just testing out against the AI probably today. Um, and then later in the week, we will probably get into some actual battles. Um, I want to build from scratch here. Okay, so this is uh, our first new ship. This is the GWS Natbald a Tugboat Class Clipper. Okay. So the OSP ships are the so the Alliance ships, which is the previous faction, are sort of like this advanced modern military. The OSP ships are sort of like the rebels. They've got like a ragtag fleet of like uh, you know cargo ships that have been refitted for war, um, so that they can rebel against the, the Alliance. Um, so that's the uh, setup here. So this is like a civilian space tugboat that's been refitted uh, for use as a warship. Uh, let's just take a look at all the ship classes real quick. So we have a shuttle. That's kind of cool. This is like, I guess, a passenger or cargo shuttle. We have the tugboat is the next one up. We've got the cargo feeder. I don't know if I've seen this one before, <coughs> or heard it mentioned before. It's interesting. <coughs> We're going to have to look in detail at all the different slots that these things have and how they fit together, because I don't really know yet. Um, and I know there's going to be some variation between individual ships, even among the same hull class. I'm going to see if the cargo feeder varies. OK, it looks like the cargo feeder is the same. Uh, Yeah. All right. The box fryer. The Ocello command cruiser. So this is like an older version of the Alliance um, heavy cruiser. Bulk freighter. Now this is the exciting one. The bulk freighters, no two of them are going to be exactly the same in appearance. They should be generally the same in terms of their performance, but each one is going to look a little bit differently because they're modified civilian ships. And so there's actually a procedural system that randomly generates the ship's layout so that no two of them each one is like a unique thing which i think is amazing um so you can see this is the exact same class of ship it's identical to the other ship in terms of performance just about um but you can see that the layout of it is different the way that the the, the visuals are different it's just got a little bit of different stuff going on with it um and you can see actually i think the onboard hard points are actually in a slightly different configuration. So it should have about the same number of hard points and the weapon positions, like their firing arcs, should be roughly equal, but the way that the modules and stuff like that are laid out differs from one ship to the next. So I think that's super interesting. It's, I'm really excited for that. So we're going to be spending a bunch of time messing around with these guys probably, just seeing you know, what's the coolest configuration that we can make. Um, Well, these are our, uh, what was the name of that class again? These are bulk freighters. And then the container liner, I think, is the same thing. Container liner. So these are container ships. These are giant container ships. These are like the battleships. Um, do they vary? They do have a little bit of variation. You can see the superstructure is different between, the, between these two ships. They have a slightly different shape. Not as different, I think, as the other ships, but I mean, this one's got like cranes and stuff on the side, so they, they're pretty different, actually. Um, I'm super excited for these things. That's just like amazing. All right, we're gonna do away with like the shuttles and stuff like that. I wanna just build using the cool container ships first. So we'll do away with the shuttle, the tugboat. We might add them back in later, depending, we'll see on the points, but I want to I wanna play with the cool, uh, weird civilian cargo ships first. Um, so let's pick our favorite f uh, appearance from these two or three mid-sized cargo ships here. Um, I don't know, they all look cool. It's hard to make a decision. I don't know how I feel about the smokestack. I don't feel like a... Or is that a crane? I guess that's a crane. Okay, 
which one of which one is my least favorite of the three? I think it's the middle one here. I think we're gonna do away with this one. I'm sure you guys in the comments will be like, no, don't do that one, do the other one. <laughs> it's okay guys. It's all good. Alright, um And then of these two, let's just pick one of these. So this is, we're making a 3,000 point fleet here. So we're almost at 3,000 points already just spending on the hull. So these are like battleships. So we're gonna have only one of these at most. Um, the ships are supposed to be a little bit cheaper for the OSP than they are for the Alliance. So we should be able to bring a little bit heavier fleet. But I mean, this is like, um, I don't know what equivalent these are on the Alliance side. I guess there's no direct equivalent maybe. But this is, you know, I mean, this is, we can't have a fleet with two battleships, obviously, right? That's way too expensive. So um, I kind of like this superstructure. So we're going to get rid of this guy here. I don't know. They both look pretty cool. All I feel like I'm making, I'm making this critical life-changing decision that's forever going to affect me because these ships, like, each one's unique. So, like, if I go back and create another one, it's never going to look the same as this one. So it's like I'm permanently saying goodbye to that other ship. But, I mean, there will be others. Uh, okay, so this is 1820 points. So it's already we've already spent a lot of points. We're probably going to have to slim this down to just two ships, I think. Uh, and then maybe we'll add in, add back in a shuttle or something like that. Um, but let's go ahead and learn about the weapon systems now. So I just want to see what size mounts they have. First of all, I'm going to figure out what the heck these huge cargo mounts are for. I think these are like missile mounts. Okay, so you have the te antenna, lighthouse illuminator, radar transmitter that deploys a high power cone in a direction for the purpose of guiding semi-active missiles. Side effect of this is the boosting of the target's radar signature, making the target easier to see. Um, so that's pretty good. Bellbird jammer, simple directional sweat noise jammer designed to radiate radio waves and frequency ranges typically used by military radar suites. Um, so these guys don't have the same sophisticated electronics warfare capabilities that the Alliance has. Their jammers aren't as good, supposedly, but um, they have longer range uh, early warning radar and they have better illuminators, I think. This is the omnidirectional jammer. Liarbird. Blackjack Laser Dazzler. This is new. Can be used to manually scramble any electro optical sensors in this area. Oh, it's also automatically slaved to the point defense control computer and will attempt to jam any. That's amazing. So they've got a they've got a new type of point defense system that messes with optical missile systems. That's fantastic. I love that. That's so cool. Um, I wonder if the um, Alliance gets that too. I'll have to check that out later because the Alliance might have some new stuff too. Uh, Bloodhound long range tracking radar uh, can develop an accurate track on a ship within an extremely narrow field while staying out of harm's way. So, this is sort of like the offset spotter radar system. R400 does not provide continuous scan like a search radar, it must be manually directed at an area to search. So, this is like a this is a, a radar beam that you point at a particular enemy ship once you've detected it. Or maybe you could point it at a line of bearing to identify a ship in that, along that line of bearing. That could be good in conjunction with the pinard if the pinard's an option here, which doesn't look like it is. So maybe this is their answer to the pinard, I guess. And then this is their other long-range radar. It's terribly inaccurate, but it gives us a notion of enemy ships being nearby. Pinpoint radar. This is the predecessor to the bullseye fire control radar. Inferior in almost every way except its resistance to jamming, but provides good target quality if it can get in range. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then plasma cannons, these are, despite its high tech sound, this plasma cannon is actually a relatively crude solution to the protector its problem of being out armored in every weight class. Okay, good to know. These coil guns fire a, pla a magnetic bottle containing superheated plasma, which shatters against the armor of a warship and melts large holes, opening it up for attack from lighter caliber weaponry, such as 100 millimeter. So this, we can use this to bust through an enemy ship's armor um, so that we can do more damage with our guns. To protect, I'm looking at his flavor text. To protectorate naval command from Ostel, classified. Constantine, our cooperation with Hellas Solutions bears fruit. You're being issued the first batch of the Type 81 plasma protector, codenamed Jin. 
As per standard fitting procedures, your vessels will be refitted to your specifications and the crew is given the necessary training in the operation of the weapon on your next return to Pyxis. Be aware that due to the time constraints needed to develop and deploy the weapon, many of the components are exposed and you must expect constant maintenance to be required, especially with the cooling rig and power supply. Remember, this is an experimental project. The Alliance is not prepared for their armor to be under such intense threat that the Jinn can pose, so you're reminded to scuttle the weapon in the event of imminent capture. Do not allow the Alliance to get any intel on the Jinn. We cannot afford mistakes. Good hunting. That's kind of cool. Um, container bank launcher. Now this is the big stuff, I think. Yeah, this is the... Okay, we're definitely going to get one of these. What's the difference between a container bank launcher and a container stack launcher? I think the container, stank, container bank launcher is specific to the giant battleship cargo ships. Rapid refitting of the cargo racks found on container ships has turned them into terrifying weapon. Addition of explosive connections as well as programmed and ignition circuits that allow these one simple truss frames to support hundreds of CM4 cargo container missiles and other utility variations. So we're going we're to slap that on there. That's super exciting. I want to try that out. Um... Container stack launcher, this is a smaller version of that. Mine launcher, this is also new. Um, minefields are a force multiplier, so it gives us some territory control options, which is pretty cool. Um, it relies on IFF from uh, radar, or um, <coughs> from radio. So if our ship's radio gets knocked out, we can actually get hit by our own mines. So we've got to keep that in mind when we're deploying these. Uh, and then we have the MLS-2, MLS-3 launchers. We're probably going to have more primitive missiles compared to the Alliance. Um, but we have the same launchers anyway. We have these uh, rocket launchers, direct fire rocket launchers. <laughs> and then these are the VLS launchers. New point defenses, the Pavis PDT. Um, Operates on the same principle as the Mark 20 Defender, but makes up for the inherent inaccuracy of the Protectorate's retrofitted civilian sensors by adding a second barrel to double the number of 20 millimeter rounds in any given point of space. Um, Bastion is a rotary flak turret, which work, works well against large groups of slow conventional missiles. And then we have the Grazer. Uh, probably the greatest threat to the Protectorate's ragtag fleet is the advanced hybrid missiles that Alliance ships regularly carry. Tremendous effort was dedicated to creating a laser weapon which could c counter even one of these missiles, and through no small feat the P-60 was developed, taking advantage of the high speed and accuracy of shipyard cutting laser arms and adding an electro-optical sensor for accuracy. P-60 can output a brief burst of laser energy to cut through sprinting threats. So we're going to want to go for that, I think. That's, that's basically like our version of the laser PD. It's pretty cool. And then we have cannons. We have a C-30, which is 100 millimeter. Like they have multi-cannons now, it's so cool. This is a C-53, was 250 millimeter. C-60 is 450 millimeter. These look strikingly like the anti-asteroid guns on the, um, the space station in the Expanse, the one where they fight the uh, stealth ship. I forget what the name of the station is. I want to say it's like Pellis Station or something. Um, but I'm probably confusing it with something else. But yeah, that's that's what these look like. And then we have T-20 cannon. This is a 100 millimeter. And then we have the T-30, which is another. So we have 300 millimeter options. What's the difference between these three? So this is a large turret that fires like multiple 100 millimeter rounds, I guess. Uh, that looks ridiculous on this enormous cargo slot. Uh, now we're gonna fill this this one with missiles as well. Yeah, of course. You know it's a cargo ship. We gotta put the cargo containers on there, right? Okay, we gotta fill these up with missiles. I'm gonna. Oh, they changed this icon. That's interesting. Okay, so they, they also have decoys, which is a super interesting thing. So we're going to, I think we're going to have some containers that are just decoys. Maybe we'll probably mix them and match them on the different racks here. Um, let's go to the missile designer and see if we can. See if there's any new built-in missile types. 
I think the rejoinder might be new, or is that one that I designed? I can't remember. Not seeing much in the way of new missiles. These are mostly my designs. Okay, let's uh, design a container torpedo. Design is invalid. Avionics package is required. Now, container torpedoes have reduced... Um, they have a reduced um, cost for seekers, which is pretty cool. I think I want to try the semi-active radar setup. Oh God, he's wet. I heard a follow. Who was that? Uh, Rebel EXE. Thanks for the follow. Welcome aboard. Let's see. So this is only one point with a semi-active. But just for the sake of argument, I'm going to put an electro-optical on here. That's only four points. That's not bad at all. Um, semi-active semi radar is susceptible to chaff is the only thing. Semi-active radar, let's see, we what do we do? An electro-optical validator. That's only three points as opposed to... That's pretty good. Okay. So we're ignoring small targets. Uh, accept targets if there are no validated targets present. I think that's okay. And then we're going to go with direct guidance. Um, I don't want to spend too much per missile on these things because they're easy to hit. Um, we want to try to just overwhelm their defenses. Uh, let's go with HE. Oh, that's expensive warhead. Penetrator is even more expensive. Okay. So this, and then I want to make the motor a little bigger, I think. Experiment and see. How does this compare to our regular missiles? Let's just check. Um, let's go to like a Thunderhead. So the Thunderhead has HEKP only works on hybrids anyway. Why do you say that? It seems to give me the option to put it on there. You're saying it's not very effective. You need to go fast. Yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> yeah, I have like a I have like a 60 point battleship killer missile that I use on one of my one or two of my uh, fleets that uh has the HEKP. They're very effective for the one thing that they're good at. Okay, so looking at the... Put it on, but it would not go fast enough to penetrate the armor. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so this is a contact fuse, 54 centimeters armor to penetration. 900, or no, this is the hit points of the... Is that the hit points of the missile or the, the damage? I think that's the damage. So it's 54 penetration, 960 damage, and a blast angle of 70 degrees. This one is... Oh, this is way more, even if I have like the smallest size of... Need at least 60 centimeters to damage BBs. That's good to know, thank you. Okay, so we can actually put really small warheads on them and make them really fast. I think that's a good idea because it makes the missiles cheaper, and I think it's going to make them a little more effective as well. And these do a ton of damage when they hit. Uh, oh, they have enormous range, too. Look at this. 28,000 meters. That's not even the max. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I guess that makes sense because they're they're like a whole freaking cargo container instead of just a regular size missile. So yeah, they're gonna. If I want to make these like a, well, uh, let's say fourteen thousand meter range. I think that's gonna be good. Think for overwhelming, we only should probably only use one seeker. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't want them to be that easily seduced, though. 
but that does cut the cost in half, so maybe that's worth. Yeah, we'll try it with a three point version first and just test it out a couple of battles, maybe, and then we'll switch it up. I think I'm gonna want to have the second validator, but because there is a there is like a tipping point where um, I don't know accuracy is useful. Um, I didn't need this in my fleet. Okay, so we got a container missile. I should give this thing a name. Um, let's call this the FedEx uh, FedEx Express. Command Seeker, um, I think the um, OSP radars are more susceptible to jamming though, aren't they? That, could, that brings up to five points. I want to try the semi-active radar, I haven't done semi-active radar in a while. I think I, I just want to, I don't know if it's going to be the best configuration, but I just want to experiment with it. I guess that also is susceptible to jamming, but... Well, I never know how what, how I should number these things. Uh... Yeah. Let's see. So this is going to be the... Um, oh, actually, no, I, I think I want to give it, let's give it a name based on the contents of the container, so, uh, free AOL CDs. There we go. So this is going to be our, our first cargo container. The theme of, the theme of this first fleet that I'm building is going to be You've Got Mail. Um, how do I... There we go. It's interesting, I have three, each one of these launchers has three container banks. The template, yeah. Oh, wow, these are cheap, look at this. Let's load them on there. More missiles than I know what to do with. I have to figure out what is our programming channels like on this ship here. <laughs> Where's that another thing with? Oh, it has a plus three hope programming channels. Okay, that makes sense because this is like a big old missile liner. Um, so we're gonna want more more channels than that probably still, or a rapid. Um, what should we call it? So we filled. I think I'm gonna put some some. I'll sprinkle some decoys in here. I guess this 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 these three slot things kind of limit how many different types of missiles you can have, which makes sense. I have to launch. I have to launch from each bay already. That's true, but you know, having being able to crank out like ten of them at a time would be way better than being able to crank out four of them. Increased programming speed. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, the, oh, they have new. I haven't looked at all the Ithaca Bridge Master. <laughs> what a what a great. Uh, oh, this is the radar. Okay. I feel like this might be an actual brand of like modern radar. I'm not entirely sure about that, but it sounds like it would be. Or contrast. I wonder if the developers are from upstate New York. Okay, so let's just look at, let's just look through all the modules that we have here. This is the drive module. OSP and unspoken philosophy intership com point. Oh, that's the name of the ship. I'm like, how do you write down that unspoken philosophy? <laughs> uh. Okay, so this is hasteful. 
Heavy civilian drive for cargo vessels hastily reinforced when commandeered. Peace output at the expense of thrust power. Oh, this is a, okay, so it's producing more energy. Um, I didn't really know. I hadn't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, this is the first ever time jumping into the game. So I'm just reading all the things and learning what they do. I just know that I want to have a lot of missiles, a lot of container missiles, because they're fun. That's the only thing that I've really made a decision about at this point. I always find it weird that the lower rated, not the lower numbered drive has like the same output seemingly as the higher rated drive. I never understood that. Or maybe, it, I guess they're less durable. Oh, let's see how it actually affects the performance here. Let me actually, I want to move the, my, my chat overlay over because it's kind of covering my uh, stat screen on the right here. There we go. Hmm. I love the look of this ship, it's so cool. Um, okay, so where's our speed stats here? Propulsion, here we go. Most these ships look cool, but I'm an alliance main. Okay. I haven't, I've obviously never played this faction yet, so I haven't made a decision, but I, I think I'm tilting towards OSP just because I really want to fire. I really want to have a lot of uh, messages sent toward an enemy ship saying, you've got mail. I don't know much good with jammers anyway. I feel like the decoys are going to be a lot of fun, and that's going to be like a whole thing. Um, I'm gonna make. Let's make. Let's throw some decoys on here, actually. Let's see. I'm thinking Corvette Swarm. Corvette Swarm. How do I? Did I do this wrong? How do I actually create a decoy? Or is that not a thing that I do here? Maybe decoys can't aren't susceptible to the designer. Okay, this is the Boker Freighter. Yeah, okay, this is this is the Corvette Swarm decoy. There we go. We got 24 decoys now. And because of the way these missile things are, the missile banks are set up, I'm only going to put one, put them in one slot. I would have. <clears throat> I'm also, I'm actually, I'm also wondering actually if the decoys can be used to, um, to defend against incoming missiles. Like if the missile will target the decoy as if it's an enemy ship. I'm, I'm going to experiment with that and find out about that. So I think that's going to be fun. Right, anyway, back to modules. All this stuff is standard. Got the new drives. Sun Drive Racing Pro. We're gonna build some expanse ship replicas here. Maybe we do the Razorback. Okay, so we got a shuttle, right? He's obviously gonna have the Sun Drive Racing Pro. And then what else does the Razorback have? Light civilian reactor is probably about right. You pay people to waste their hybrids with the bulk freighter decoys. That's true, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll get one bank of those as well. They are pretty cheap. 
Uh, I'll put those up front, I think. Actually, no, I should put them on the ones that have three. Be more efficient that way, probably. Um, I don't know if I really need 24 of them, but... <coughs> it doesn't give me the option to, like... Actually, if I put fewer of these, can I put... No, I can't. I might as well take the full 24. Actually, should I should I name this free AOL CDs or should I just call it You've Got Mail? I'm not sure which is better. It'd be nice if I could have both, but I'd have to have two different missile designs for that, I guess. Um, maybe let's have two different missile designs. You've got mail. I do like You've Got Mail. I think it would. I think it would be funny if I fired both of them at the same time, like follow, like a uh, volley of free AOL CDs followed by "You've Got Mail." I think that makes the most sense. Um, what do I want to do with these? That's different than what I did with the other one. Maybe EO seekers. No. We do command guided. Or we could do A RADs. That makes sense because to have them in a different role. Okay, let's do A RADs. Um. Oh, do we want anything in this? I forgot we can put these things. We probably don't want any of this stuff. Fast start and module could be fun. Minus 66% programming time. That's pretty good. Does increase the, the cost significantly. Um. <laughs> How wrong would it be to put decoy launchers on these things? <laughs> firing 48 of them and each one of the firing decoys. <laughs> That's just wrong. I, don't, I think it would be amazing, but it's probably too expensive. It does have the. It does enjoy the cost reduction. That would be for frame drops. Yeah. <laughs> they did say that they improved the performance in this version. I don't think I want to do any special modules for this. I think we're going to make these as cheap as possible. The, um, the ARAM one, ARAD ones. Okay, and I think we're just going to do one package of the ARAD ones. So I'm probably not going to use those quite as much. Um... There we go. I did by a lot. Okay, that's good. And then what on earth is... Oh, I missed a container slot. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, can't have that. <laughs> I, d I don't know if I had enough missiles before. This is like this is gonna be my entire arsenal basically is just all these containers. So I better bring more of the explosive regular explosive ones. I wonder if I should bring some armor piercing ones actually. Oh no, the HKKP doesn't work with these, so I think this will be good. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to drop a ship here. I think the Razorback could be my scout and maybe mine layer, if that's a thing I can do. Yeah. Probably not going to call it the Razorback, I'm going to call it something else. Normal HE is really good. Yeah, that's what I figured. Really can't go wrong with um, bigger than um, whatchamacallit. Regular, bigger than Thunderhead HE. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna have a mine launcher here. I guess it does this have ammo or what? Mine launcher, do you know? It does. Okay. So this one has the advantage that it can network to conduct a simultaneous attack with other mines in the cluster. Uh, and this one, I guess, is a faster mine, yeah. How much do these things cost? 10 points. 6 points. Wait, why do the regular mines cost the same as the cooperative mines? I guess it's just a matter of which behavior you want. Only fifth floor mines. That's about what I expected. Is there any limit to the duration of the mines? Probably not, right? Um, I should probably put some DC lockers on this. Let's do that before I forget about it. <clears throat> I probably want another CIC too. This particular ship configuration, all of the compartments are in one vertical stack here, just about. Oh no, there's one up here, okay. Put one up at the front. Yeah, I know, I'm aware, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it down after I finish like this one ship build. Probably gonna end up eliminating these ships, sadly. Much of these. These are 390. This might already be too much. I might have to cut this one ship down. <laughs> yeah, we'll get rid of these ships. There will be others, even though they're neat looking. They're still at 3100. So for now, I'm going to eliminate the shuttle. Okay, now we have enough points. We can actually put compartments on here. I feel like this is not a great fleet arrangement, but I want to make the missiles a little cheaper or reduce the number of them a little bit. But I really just want to have, like, all the missiles. Like the proper Macross Missile Masker. Or my first uh, cut at this, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Rapid Cycle Cradle. Improved hydraulic drivers and a weapons auto loader crater cradle, allowing it to cycle the next round of the chamber relatively quickly. Okay. Oh, so they can the alliance or the um, these guys can fire their stuff quicker. Okay, I think we just want to throw on a couple parallel interfaces, as many as we can. This is already over. This one ship is already over three thousand points. It's crazy. What's the cheapest possible container we can build? We do a size one warhead. Size two warhead costs the same as size one, so let's do... Are these already size two? They are. We don't have a semi-active radar yet. Active. So the fixed semi-active fixed semi radar is the cheapest. So we wanted to go with a real overwhelm build, this would be the way to go. Um, what do we want to title this one? 
already got free AOL CDs and you've got mail, so this has got to be... Uh... You need direct guidance, like a regular active radar. What do you mean command guided? Oh, yeah, I haven't put that on there. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, if I can like eliminate their jammers and decoys, the fixed active radar would be the way to go. Potentially. And I just need to come up with a name for this thing. Thirty. I gotta change the name of this, the numbering of this as well. Um. Modem noises. No, I should, I should give it a. Uh, where is DVDs? There we go. Okay, so let's. I don't think I need twenty four decoy liners. I think that's excessive. I think like eight of them would be more than I could ever possibly use effectively, at least in a match. What's the size of a decoy liner fleet typically look like? These things are 350, so. Probably be like four of those, three, four of those in a fleet. What do you typically see in a, a line ship fleet? I guess we could look at the defaults, the built in ones. Um, okay, so we're gonna get rid of some free AOL CDs here. Yeah, put them in some more wires DVDs. This is reducing the point cost, right? Yeah, that's that reduced the cost by like hundreds. So I think that's good. Another parallel interface. And is there any other stuff here that we actually need? We need to figure out where our uh, semi-active radar thing is going to go, and I think we want the early warning radar, probably. Need to find a good mount, yeah. I mean, these, this is pretty good. You can't really go wrong with the directly on the nose, yeah. That would be the illuminator, I guess. And then does it, the early warning radar takes up a mount too, I think, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe like that. Yeah, I'm in trouble seeing exactly where that is. But on top? It's underneath. Okay. I feel like it's a problem to have the radar underneath and the illuminator on top. Let's put it on the side instead. I think it was like a side slot there, wasn't there? No, the 
is underneath. What if we put the illuminator underneath and we put the early warning radar like here? I think that could work. And then I don't know what that's going to be yet. Since we're, I was going to say, since we're using mines, but we actually just eliminated the mines, so we don't have to worry about that. Can it be stealthy with a thing this size? What, it, what would it take to make it hard to spot? It's probably going to be easy to spot regardless. So radar signature, 17,300 square meters with a plus 10% from the illuminator. So yeah, we're not going to be, the, we're not going to be stealthy. But we should probably get like a, a increased speed then. Make this a rusher, yeah. Good flanking engine, follow the biggest ships on your team. So that would be the Sun Drive Racing Pro, right? damage minus 20 top speed plus 25 percent <laughs> so, i like the idea of taking this enormous cargo ship and just sticking an engine from like a little racing ship in it and it ends up being faster that's just fantastic all right okay so this is obviously going to be the gws america online these other things do track correlator that would probably help with the early warning radar right positional error minus 20 percent probably just add a spotter ship and finish the fleet oh so you don't think i should try to fill all the slots here yeah that's probably a better idea the pd yeah we should add some pd probably I could put some AMMs. Did they ever have they improved the AI of the AMMs at all? By the way, a quick time check here. I think I got time still. Yeah, we're good for a bit. Let's throw this scout first and then see how that um, low on resource power. Let's, uh, we should probably fix that. I think that would be, could probably put another reactor here. Put a light civilian reactor. As far as this thing has a power problem, I think it's since we switched to the sun drive. Sun drive. Uh, don't give a, none of these things give a ton of power. I mean, the BW2000 gives a plus 1500. I guess since we have the early warning radar and we're only using missiles, we could maybe give up our bridge master. I feel like that's a bad idea. Yeah, in fact, that's definitely a bad idea. Let's not do that. We'd use the original engine and see if another component slot could fit the raising engine. That's a good idea. But this is 5x3x5, five by by five, so yeah, that definitely seems doable. So this would be... 1500. And then... I don't think we have another slot that can fit in, unfortunately.
I'm gonna make another one of these ships and see if it has the option to give different engines. No, the uh, module slots are all the same. We're still under our... Okay, let's see what we can do with the compartments to fix our power budget here. You can obviously add a plant control center. I think that's the way to go. Oh, we should probably add a crew berth at some point. Although I guess... Does it have like a really high base crew? Because it doesn't seem that we require a berth. Thruster reinforcement component? Um, uh, probably. I'm not seeing it actually. Unless it's here. Reinforced thruster nozzles, here we go. We can do that now because we added the power the plant control center. No, we can't. I lied. How many plant control centers do we need to make this work? Use the original engine. I, mean, I, I do have it set to the original engine. Do these, uh, the container things use a lot of power? Or is it, it must be the radar. The radar is probably taking all the power. And the, um, illuminator. It's gonna load this thing up with plant control centers. I don't think we're gonna be able to fit a shuttle, though. So that would give us, give us like 70 points to refit a shuttle. We've only got one damage control center on here, which I don't like so much. Do I? Is it, uh, oh yeah, I do, okay. Okay, so this is technically done, I guess. So I don't have enough points to like put a bon put on a bunch of PD or anything. So this is gonna be like a one and done. I'm gonna just ram this thing down their throats and fire all my missiles, and it's gonna be glorious. And then everything else we want to do has to fit on this little ship. I should probably... I feel like the ship design is not good. I should figure out a way to cut it down somehow. What if we just go with four, four decoys for the container liners? Oh, we probably don't need 24 clippers either. Let's go with like 12. Yeah, now we got like an, another 100 points to work with. I think that'll help. Um, that seems about right. I'm gonna save this fleet before I like crash my computer or something. Okay, hey, thanks for hanging out. Good to see you. Welcome aboard. Um, let me start a new folder here for OSP fleets. Prodigy, Prodigy. We 
Okay, so what are we doing with this guy now? He's probably going to have some e-work capability or e-work countering capability. Probably should have some PD. At the minimum, he needs a VLS launcher with some decoys or something. Oh, uh, that's interesting. They don't have active decoys. Okay. Let's do... And then can we put some AMMs in here? Should put these in a formation of some kind. Probably want them to be very close together. I'm actually going to put this behind because when I go to deploy, it's going to be backwards. I think. I might want to go up one chip class instead of a shuttle and get a uh, tugboat. We'll see about that in a minute. This guy needs a better radar. I'm going to move my chat again so I can see the descriptions. Um, or Huntress. This cannot lock. I would like a locking radar if we could manage that. Am I looking in the wrong category here? No, it's the bridge master, that's the radar. I'm gonna look at one of the larger slots just to see what uh, if there's other options that I'm missing here. I don't think so. So the bridge master is like the basic, the huntress is a more advanced. They don't have like a spyglass, they just have the early warning radar. It's interesting. Strobe correlator. Dedicated processing subsystem for radar is allowing them to more finely determine the direction of incoming jamming strobe. Now let's play around with the clipper, because I think if he has more slots... No, he doesn't. Darn. Cargo feeder. Cargo feeder has an extra slot. So let's have the cargo feeder go with the cargo ship. See if we can make that work. That can, no, it's not going to work, because it only gives us 25 points to put stuff on the ship. Okay, so back to the shuttle then. First, I have to put in the um, missiles again. I think I'm going to give this guy a scryer, because the other guy can't fit it anywhere. Maybe not. I think I'm looking in the wrong category, maybe. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can't really afford that. We go. And 
then I'm gonna try this laser laser dazzler if we can. Okay. I don't know if that's gonna work well with the radar though. We might not be able to fit both on the shuttle. These both have the same power output, which is interesting. This has a max range of 10 kilometers, so I think we're getting over the Huntress probably. Um, Bulwark has a bigger positional error, but that's okay because we're not using guns. This needs a DC locker. This for the CIC, no. Should this guy get re reinforced thruster nozzles too? Uh, oh, I can't fit a scryer. Okay, here we go. Or we could go with a strobe correlator or a track correlator. Let's go with the stroke core later, I think. 100% power. I think we're going to be able to make bastions work because we don't have any slots available for um, ammo. My control center, I think, is better than the berthing if we can manage it, but it doesn't look like we can. Um, okay, so berthing it is here. It means we're at 100% power. Can we get the all energy regulator, or possibly another reactor. No, energy regulator is not the right thing. It's either reactor booster or we don't have a micro reactor. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we can we fit a second grazer? No. Backup antenna. Pinpoint radar. That'd be really good if we could get that on there. I don't think it'll... Oh no, okay, it does work. I don't know how much good this one grazer is going to go do. I feel like it's the same as having no PD. We're also over our point costs. Um... Okay, we're gonna try this as our fleet. I think it's gonna be a disaster and it's gonna be glorious and it's gonna be fun as hell. And we'll have to mess with the line ships uh, next time. Okay, I'm just checking the time. I do have a one o'clock meeting, so I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to test this fleet today, unfortunately. Uh, maybe let's start building another one. Now that we kind of know what stuff is, maybe we can do it a little more quickly. I haven't figured out what the role of the tugboat class is. Like, the frigates have bigger, like, power availability, more modules and stuff like that. The tugboat doesn't seem to have any of that, so I'm not sure what its role is. But I guess it has more weapon slots, maybe, than the shuttle. Let's just compare them side by side here. Okay, yeah, the tugboat has two extra weapon slots. It does actually have more compartments, although the number of modules is the same. So... See about that later. I want to. I want to do some big guns with this build. I think. Uh, so this is going to be a line ship. It's 
Let's go for like the 450 millimeters. What's the difference between a C65 and a C60 other than it being an extra 20 points? I think this is like a double cannon. Yeah, okay. So let's have one side as our designated like broadside. I like the look of this. I guess we could have those cannons on each side. I feel like it's kind of a waste of points, but we could, you know, theoretically wait into the middle of an enemy fleet that way. I have the feeling that this ship doesn't have very good PD slots. We obviously need a lot of PD on this set up. This is a Mark 64. Smaller caliber and light construction allows it to feature a generous range of motion to help catch fast moving enemy ships. What's the range on these cannons, by the way? Okay, so this has a 70 or 10 kilometer range. So we're going to want to be between 5 and 10 kilometers with the ship. And then we'll probably put missiles on the other side, maybe those container missiles. Kind of bummed that I don't even have enough time left in the stream to actually test out my missile ship against like an AI or something. But it takes like, I mean, you know, forget this. Let's see, let's see if we can test. Do a quick test. Um, oh, they have a testing range now. See what happens if I load up onto the testing range. Maybe we can get some shots off right away. Standing by. Probably should put this guy in the number one slot. Where are orders, Commander? I don't know. I don't know what we're shooting at here, but it is going to be in a world of hurt. So let's go with Active Radar first. Let's see how quickly we just fire off all 48 missiles. Try to get away from these. Oh, salvos. Standing by. Aye, aye, forming up. Can't wait to see these things launch. I'm so hyped. We're taking fire. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Oh, in the formation. I shot my own ship. <laughs> Knocked out all the forward thrusters. Are they... am I fighting against my own fleet? I totally am. Okay. Interesting. Awaiting your orders, Commander. What is it, Commander? What are our orders, Commander? Okay, let's, um... Aye, aye, Commander. You heard the orders. Let's go. Yes, Commander. Firing missiles. I'm not super happy with the rate that these things, these missiles are coming out. These are chaffing players, I guess. 
My PD is also terribly ineffective, but that's to be expected. I wish I could see the enemy ship's damage chart. Okay, all right, we got some missiles coming out now. Lots of free AOL CDs. All of them are missing because of the chaff. Let's see them try to get away from these. The laser is doing nothing for us. Oh, let's see this thing move also, by the way. We'll be there before you know. See how quickly this thing can... Uh, let's go to flank speed, because that's where we're built for. Oh, it's getting a pretty good acceleration on. It's still firing, whereas DVDs. Check if the illuminator's actually on. Should be. Oh, that's the early warning radar. That's cool. Right away. I think. Seems like it's having trouble staying in arc. Maybe we want to have a heading that's more like this. Because the early warning radar is way off. This is so satisfying, just firing off all these cargo containers, <laughs> wave after wave of them. That's fun. It's not going to be terribly effective against an actual good PD net, but it is very satisfying to play. Alright, and we do have to wrap up here, unfortunately, because I have to be on a call. I want to say thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to follow if you're watching on Twitch or subscribe. It's free if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, and expect to see a lot more of this game in the next couple of weeks as I test out the new faction. Take care, folks.